Okay, so there are some. So for those of you who don't know what this is yet, I'm going to explain it again. <laughs> um, Ubuntu test of commercial hardness is uh, a tool for us to be able to work on the end to end in any test case we have. Uh, we are going to be adding different positioning methods that everyone will be able to use. So that we don't all have to be solving the same problem in the end, which is provisioning a machine uh, for generating a lab sample, having Jenkins to actually pick up the job of running the test cases. Which is not a new one that we want to do. So with you tap, you can you can actually uh, run this from our lab uh, on your desktop at home on some other uh, machine you have uh, somewhere there. And you don't necessarily need to install things manually. The framework, the hardware will take care of it. So there are uh, two parts, two main parts of it. One is the provisioner, which I think we should discuss first. Um, the other one is the test runner itself. So we want to absorb so far, we only provision VMs and we do it with VM tools. Mm -hmm. This is a change. This was a proof of concept just to make sure that the cost of work that we could actually do it. We can do it for some end user cases. Okay, we might have to add the other one in there just to make some of us use it. But primarily, we can do it in the box for the provision. Exactly. <coughs> so we'll be doing it in the box. How about the um, yeah, we'll be looking. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know how much long time we'll have during the cycle, but that is something we'll be looking at. What's the difference between provisioning mass? I mean, excuse me, I have got mass. Yes, the mass is a one-to-one. -one. You can only provision as many bare matter machines as there are, but you get bare matter. Okay. Um, with OpenStack, you get virtual machines, um, so you can get many more machines that are already available. So if you have an open stack provision of testing, mm -hmm. uh, and also provisions will be quicker because the virtual is faster. So we are going to be having uh, sort of a QA stack in the lab. So we definitely want to be able to deploy machines on the yeah. office. So when you're when you're using when you specifically need a test or want to bear metal for the purpose of the test, then you obviously want to do using mass. Otherwise, I would suggest that most things open stuff will be fast quicker and you don't have to worry as much about the number of the machines. Okay, so we will how, use how close is a default open is, is a default open site image to default? It's, so it's not it's not it's, it's a cloud, cloud image. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cloud image. So it's it's almost the same as cloud image. Yeah, I mean it would be I think it would be suitable for something, but there are some tests where, where we're trying to like if we're doing a daily ISO test, yeah, we can test that ISO. Yeah. We can do that on VM certainly. I mean, yeah, we, definitely, we definitely want to support OpenStack testing yeah. for what works. Yeah, sure. There are tests for which you need bare metal, and there are tests for which you need KVM direct. So yeah. yeah. And for the local machine, it's KVM the Bird, Alexi, or what is for the local machine? Virtual is the one. Well, right now, we're using KVM with Bird. Um, okay. I'd like to add Alexi as well. But that's Depends on the test again, yeah. but then you need hard drives and no. Well, especially when they, like that demo after the uh, plenary about, not the plenary, they'd like to talk about ARM support in LXC. Yeah, I'd really like to get that in there because that's probably the fastest way we can test the problem. So. Okay, cool. Okay, okay so we Thank have mass, OpenStack, and LXC. Um, we have support. Um, KVM. KVM is a different one. Uh, we will. We'll, we have one provisioning method right now that uses KVM. We do want to create an additional method that uses KVM to match the current ISO testing framework. Basically, we, we want one that will, because right now we can, just, we can download an ISO reminder, but we need to be able to take an arbitrary ISO internal that already increased it. So okay. that, that yeah. is that stuff. Yeah. So is that the same? So could we do that on OpenStack? No. 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 You, you can't give a ISO image to see how it moves. 
it's not supported. Yeah, so. it's not. That, that so the only thing we can do in OpenStar in OpenStar is provision a machine already installed. We can yeah, test the installer. Yeah. So this is for the use case of the installer. But for package testing, we can get many, many more machines that will be stacked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and I don't know whether this fits or not, but would Juju be a way of provisioning an environment, or yes. is that too high level? Is that another type uh, of provisioning? For complex, for complex installations, we are going to good. do one of them. Good. That's good. The thing is, we don't think we're going to get to complex installations this time. Yeah, but anybody who's already deploying an uh, environment and, using and Juju yeah, for if, testing, yeah, you can pick up Yeah, if you wanted later. to develop a provisioning method for that, we would be happy to take it. Well, I don't know about that, but I'll definitely be using yeah. Juju for testing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I'll think James, about it. James <laughs> means that uh, Robbie proposed to do that. <laughs> uh, it's the, the main, okay, you so... You proposed to do that, didn't you? Just yeah, to so say... Yes, so the armor testing, we wanted to have the ability to use Juju, so maybe by the time we're there, because we're quite far away from as well, it can be... With okay, so, so before we get too far about designing Juju mm -hmm. testing, the Juju team are also putting together a way of testing charms. Which you should be able to reuse. So, I, so I it think will happen, and we will, you know, we'll just suck it up, and it'll be yeah. fine. That's yeah. This, yeah, that's this thing that happens to you. You do it something, and suddenly something else happens, and you're doing something. Else. So, yeah, we'll be doing it. So, while we're talking about provisioning methods, um, in ARM's case, there are two different options, and okay. we might need to use both. Um, one is um, maths, because I'm going to be working on making maths work on ARM. So as soon as you support maths, and I support ARM supports maths, the two should just work. So that's so the one. There's an action on us to support maths. There's an action on you to make it work for ARM. Yeah. What's the other option? Huh? What's the other option? Uh, okay, so the other option, uh, or difficulty uh, otherwise, is that we don't have uh, any we have very limited access to ARM hardware that will support MAS because for MAS support to work on ARM, we need high PMI uh, management. Okay. And uh, so that's not publicly available, and we have very limited prototype type stuff within the number. Is, uh, is more hardware supported than the Kava at this point? Sorry? Is more hardware supported than the Kava at this point? No, not even that. So, uh, so what I've been doing in uh, our ARM work testing stuff is being using development boards. We have lots of pandas, uh, but not using maths because I don't think it's worth trying to fit around making this so whole to get the pandas. So we are, we are provisioning panda using a, uh, a bunch of scripts I've written which use uh, USB loop to cause the panda to ignore the SD card okay. and, and read the from scratch. So the other option is to do that. Now I have scripts that work today, okay. but it might not be it depends on you. It might not be worth it. You might decide you want to wait for mass support and use mass hardware. Well, I mean, we've got pandas we want to test on. So if pandas aren't going to be supported with mass, then... So you have to do that. Then I have a provision for pandas. Okay. Yeah. Can we have you give me an item to get those scripts? Yeah. Give him the Well, give me an item to integrate his scripts into your app. Talk me on that also. Add me on So the just to make sure we're on the same page, all it does is it, it, it knows this configure the config file, it knows about what panel is there. And you run a command, and the command exits with the zero status, the board's ready. Okay. That's it, it runs DR. Yeah. Okay. So we need to move on, but we need to follow up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, custom machine provisioning, I think we've touched on that already. Yeah. Max will be taking care of it. What do you mean by config file? Right now we don't have, you can't use a config file for Utah? Ah, so instead of parameters you mean the command Yeah, line. it's, or it's uh, what we, we discussed, uh, <coughs> uh, parameter overload. This is low priority. But also more in depth configuration. Mm, it's not that low priority. Okay. It, it will be something very good to have. Okay. It's not a priority for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It will be a hard pain. Some it will be a major pain. That but it would be that the copy file would be a great help to automation compared to how much time it's going to take to implement, which is not much. Okay, so we'll we'll put you on that one. 
software, virtual machine support? I think that will I think we'll be getting that as a part of um, custom machine provisioning, actually. Custom machine provisioning? Uh, we'll have up there the uh, the virtual machine will be used for the, the current ISO testing so, framework. So it's the same thing, right? Yeah, you can we'll just move that up on there. support for users other than UTH. So right now we have a user, we create a user on the machine that's going to accept the support, which is called UTH. Because? Um, to manage logging, SSH keys, <coughs> contract files used by the external scripts we're calling. And yeah, that's what we're doing. And do we want to integrate that in the current user or do we want to keep just a separate Ooh. user? I think in the lab, the separate user still makes sense. We've had requests from some users to be able to run as their user. I think that's something we're going to want. Yeah, that's something we want to add, but I don't think we need it to get things immediately running. Okay, so this is low priority, but it would be high. I'm about halfway there already. Okay. I'm just having trouble for a while. Okay. So, possible running of catalog to manage a provisioning position. I thought we had done that. Um, no, I, mean, I could have changed that if we want to. I just didn't know what specifically we would have done. Okay. What is this for? Do we have a list of the machines that are available for testing that? Yeah, so that we don't over provision the machine. Okay. Um, provisioner? No. It's a, a, a database, right? Sure. A list of machines. So yeah. what would we call it? Inventory? Inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but so that's the original inventory. <coughs> okay. Uh. So since that is your code, I'm going to be down for that. Yeah, that would be easy. Don't be interested in that. That's like a one answer. So different provisioning managers? Those, um, I don't think we need any of those to get running in the lab. The main thing, I think at some point, right now our main inventory is um, just a small SQLite database. If we're running a whole lot of tasks from different sources, I think we're going to want a better database for that. But I think it's good. I think we're, well, I think we can ramp up to a significant degree without that. Okay. So, we, I mean, I was thinking more of using different instances of UTH rather than having a single, exactly. a single yeah. one that handles everything. Yeah, so you, so you, can, that, and, yeah. you consider one of the larger pieces of server infrastructure in the lab that has potential to hammer something, even though it's one server running virtual machines. So I agree with that. So I think SQLite might struggle in some use cases. So but I think it will be a while before it does. Probably. And everything, well, everything right now is just written using the Python <laughs> two APIs. So it would take me about an hour to put it post into the customer. So if we, if we get to one that's a problem, I think we can fix it. But I think it will be a while before it is. And SQLite's multi-user, multi-process stuff's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is low priority in our list. Um, That's done already. This is done. Yeah. I think we're going to need to have additional discussion around what exactly we want out of that. And I'm not sure this is the best place to have that discussion. Okay. So. Check integrity of the image before proceeding. This is, <coughs> this is on, uh, we discussed this today on the small testing one. And I think I assigned it to Siva, which is the static validation of the image. So this has to go into GitHub. You need to think of it. Right? Mm -hmm. Once you get something, you have to sit down. So this is 
to be like if I say we have a big machine in the lab that's capable of running a lot of VMs and I want to connect to that from my machine. I don't think we need that now. I just think we can extend that show. Okay. You should be able to do that now. Well, we are they just are they just running on their We should be able yeah, I mean if I have the configuration file we can do that. But um, we, we right we now the VM, the KVM instance we're connected to is hard code. So it is a change to be able to do that okay. even if it's a very true. We have a comment there, spam Clean. Is it IPA? No, clean. Ah, clean. Okay. So SQLite. I can address that. Um, the current SQLite model we're using is basically we do an insert, and uh, we take the ID of that insert, and then when maybe we update when we're done, maybe we don't. We that's not even required. So basically, all we're doing is doing an insert, and getting that ID to make sure our IDs don't collide. I've done that with multi-users on the same machine and not have problems. Yes, so writes um, concurrent transactions that write uh, can't be done in SQLite, but to complete the transaction, the other one can be fine. Yeah. Okay, so I've noted the comment then just for us to, to be mindful. So we we're doing about formal KVM. Yeah, um, that will be very easy to add. I mean, I have actually, we'll probably uh, we'll get that as part of that in the configuration file if we don't do it otherwise. Okay. Yeah. So the test runner. Well, do we want to? Is there anything else that people would like to see in the version that we haven't discussed before we move on? Maybe just for clarification. Uh, so the scheduling of the machines over testing always be more to be done in mass. That's my understanding, right? What about the arm stuff? You are using mass for arm. No, not at all. Um, so, there is no mass support for arm. Yeah, right? so the question is like how we do schedule the boxes for the testing. We will have a we'll have there's an inventory system within Utah that um, I'm not sure I would just schedule it specifically. That's how we would prevent um, from, you know, two processes trying to access the same machine. Uh, we may have to put, we, I mean, we need to write a schedule for that as part of the inventory. Yeah. But right now, we just block it doesn't do that. And, and actually, this, this, will, this will be the same problem for very Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you'll have to serialize the usage. And we can solve that in Can you pin particular tests, jobs to run particular types of uh, As we add support for bare metal, we'll add support for that. What does bare metal support mean? Like right now, we can, can only run tests on a virtual machine. It means being able to actually, from the tool, being able to provision a machine, SSH in the, the test that we need to run, run that and then getting the results done. Okay. Uh, so for does, it, does it include handling if like X locks up the machine? Sorry, if X locks up the machine, if the test causes a GP lockup? Um, I think <coughs> the only way for us to really address that is setting a time limit for a test. If there is no response after whatever, uh, we can abort and uh, yeah. all the cycle the machine. Yeah, I think it's a very complicated thing. All bare metals are connected to a power controller. And oh. we can access it and control it through, for example, yeah, power or not. Then users won't be able to do that. Any users, someone running on the machine? Uh, no, no, but this, is, this, is, this has to be part Sorry, of the machine. Sorry, why not? PDU. Unless you're running it virtually, in which case it is the current virtual machine. <laughs> that, that would be the most common use case for people <laughs> who are running this. <laughs> Sorry. Because somebody else may be running and you're just for a cycle and destroy the test from somebody else. But within the test, you should be able to at least signal that you need a power 
uh, with that uh, removed or better. We might want to set up a, like a technical list for this. Maybe we'll be able to subscribe and we can answer questions. Yeah, and it might be good. I don't think we're going to be able to go through other questions here okay. today. So I will give myself an action to set up a technical list and then add it to the group. If you guys want to subscribe, you can just. Yeah, because uh, it, it seems we have a, a bit of interest on that. There are at yeah. least four here that would like to power cycle the machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's actually supported as part of the test. They're not power cycling, I guess. Um, if the machine is in a stable and usable state, rebooting is supported as part of running the test. Yeah. But yeah, if it locks up. This is like if yeah. I'm still running after an hour and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Do you have watchdogs enabled on the end? Sorry? Do you have watchdogs, the virtual watchdog enabled on the end? No, there is, there is no way for you to have a generic watchdog because uh, each task may have a different uh, yeah. time of day. No, no, I mean, like in Linford, you can turn on, you can, you can expose a virtual watchdog and then you can uh, enable it in the Yeah, but that only picks up certain vetting rates. So, I think that would be a feature for us, but it wouldn't cover everything. <coughs> Add it to the to the blueprint if you okay. want us to think about it. Sure. Or the input pad or the blueprint. I'm I'm just you have a question. Or the input pad, yeah, I'll I'll copy and paste the problem. I'm I have a question with the bare metal provisioning. Uh, what is our would we be able to test the uh, booting and installation of the meeting? Mm -hmm as well as all the other tests? Or is it just to get the real hardware? The media itself, we don't have, I mean, an actual CD, we don't have a way to remotely insert right now. What would be right, okay. the media, like fix it. Right, okay. But I would be able to test, for example, get some good. Yes. And actually, that's the preferred way for you to use Right, okay. And actually, and test the installations, because for my use case, I would be interested in automatically provisioning and installing great software great encryption in RPM and test that every week. Can you do that through a pre -seed? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. But, but this you, I can so test it. Okay, this, so this, this might mean that we, we would have to do that outside mouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, we have to bear mouse in general one. And one way you have control of your story. The guys are testing we're gonna have that running. Because I think I'll be working with QA to do that type of stuff for ready to one of our two be supported provisioning methods involve our arbitrary Right. Thank you. Good. Okay. Okay, so can you move on to the test line? Any questions you have, either dump them on the etherpad and we'll discuss them on the list or um, <coughs> the test runner is the piece of Utah that runs uh, on the machine on the test. So we as a sage, we install the package on the machine and that is the piece that downloads the test suites and executes them, right? From the run list you know where the test suite is if you download it and execute it. So did you notice know comment on the RSC? Yes, yes, we okay. already answered. Okay, cool. So, create an argument parser that supports versioning for Python older than 2.7. Is that from Europe or from Joe? That's from Europe. Um, so I think we need to support Python 3. Uh, well, if no, we're, the, we're the, just on Hardy, we need to support The oldest Python, as far as I can remember, that we use is on Hardy and it's uh, 2.5 or something. Else. Any, anybody remember? 252? I can quickly check. Uh, we feel cool. Uh, Joe, are you there? Are you listening? Can you signal us somehow? So, so uh, Hardy has 2.5 now. 2.5. Is that the latest that it had? Or is that the latest jazz? Or is that the latest um, I think the current Python on Hardy is 252. Okay. It is, yeah. 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 So it supports all the parts and all the Yeah, but uh, we have uh, well, well, to be careful. Sorry, when does Hardy go out of support? Sorry? When does Hardy go out of support? Yeah, I was thinking uh, that it's about one more year, two more years. So when it must yeah. be only one more year. It has it's all the parts, but not all the parts. Yeah, and we're currently in the parts. It's almost the same. 
Yeah, that's the word that should be moved out. That's okay. The we need to discuss the Python version of. Yeah, one moment here. Yes. We didn't go with three initially because I couldn't find Python libvirt for three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, foundation steam is pressing too. So, from what I understand, that should be improving in the next release, but. Uh, yeah, we're so gonna have to support both. Right, or, yeah, right or now, one. right now the future of Python is two seven. Uh, three is a uh, test. Yeah. But for twelve by four, three is supposed to be the only one. Uh, yeah, but uh, so, yeah. Twelve ten on CD, not on uh, server. Five by so twelve ten. Yeah. There is the idea of having Python three as the standard, but uh, this is what we're developing now, so we cannot rely on it as being generically available, okay. or the support libraries to be there. So Do you need to wait for the parting to uh, Right, so Python Revert is an on Ubuntu server seed, and that means we are targeting it not for 12.10, but for plus one release. The server should have Python 3 in one year. Okay, so when you do Next cycle, yeah, we yeah, do next cycle, next cycle. So, I've assigned to draw all this task to the from team, so I don't think there's any controversial thing. There's just functionality that hasn't been added yet to the to the partners. You can have a look at it and ask questions if you have any. We want to add support for run as a different user of the default one. So if someone wanted to run as whomever, that's what's on draw. Um, add proper support for test cases types and we currently only support user land, so we want to also support um, kernel test cases. So we have another support for that. Um, that's what George did as well. This is um, yes. Test supervisor, I don't know what this means. Do you? I don't. Um, is Joe available to speak to the well, the guest test supervisor would be something which will parse out all your machine if it's stuck on the test and trying to keep up with it. That's uh, done. It's done. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> yeah, if you could explain what it does uh, on the end of part, that would be helpful, too. So, yes. Test with control timeout is the default for all test cases in the suite. Okay. TS control timeout is the default for all test cases in the suite. So, right, we want to make uh, the test case, uh, the test suite, able to expire the timeout if it doesn't come back after however many minutes or seconds. So, that's my implement here, I think. Zero timeout means no timeout, so if you want to leave it forever, if it doesn't come back, you just put a zero in there. Um, that's done as well. You've been busy this week, Joe. Um, what's the proposed layout for Utah directory? Um, that's just how, when you unpack a run list, that's what, where, where it's put in the file. Okay. Yeah. So it's not desired. Yeah. Now this this actually I think is quite important. That's that is as it is currently implemented. I think that's here if we need a reference or if we want to change it. Yep. I think we already did that actually. I think it is part of the new or new app. Okay. But we will check that. So you're not going to be driving in from the machine, well, okay, that's fine. 
We just need one more sheet. Well, to we, we could. Actually, yeah, we could be describing that. Well. Uh, so the arm testing we've done at the other end, because most of our testing is on one machine or a large portion do, we have the test run script. By definition, by spec, it has to run on a management machine. And it has to be aware to SSH and SCP to the others. So the provisioner just makes sure that SSH and SCP are all, and then the test itself takes care of the rest. But what you've done is you've got them copied to one machine, and then the test takes care of it, assuming it's already there. Yeah. So there's a slight difference. So obviously, for a test that only needs to run on one machine, it's a better approach because then you don't have to more responsibilities in the runner for the common case. Um, but I don't mind if you need a separate machine, um, if it's easier to design things that way, and arrange things that way. But um, we do need the ability for the provisioner to provision them. And for whichever machine you give us, where the test control applies, to be able to get to the other machines. So this is, this is the task I think on the wood we'll be discussing at next UDS. This is where we're going to get the other side. Okay. We are going to focus on getting up and running properly uh, single machine testing, and then we will be thinking about multi machine testing. But I think we should think, start um, the discussion. Right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be doing some activity this cycle on multi machine testing anyway for the charm work. So, okay. but so you guys are going to be leading the way. Yeah, um, sorry. So, <laughs> right now, also about Jenkins. Uh, mm -hmm. Jenkins is driving the test. So you can, you could have a wrapper over Utah that stop, has this stop type of control. Stop dropping things from Utah. No. Yeah, it's, it's complicated because then Jenkins needs to call No, you. I mean, if you need it now. If he needs it now, okay, I mean, we need it now because we've got our own thing that works now. Okay. So we're just looking to be able to integrate with you when we can. So, so if that is going to be an exercise for then okay, it's going to be an exercise for okay. No, but we are going to be accepting submissions for approaching so if you figure out how to provision with Utah with your Oh yeah, yeah. we're definitely giving you a provisioner for, for single machines, but our multi-machine tests can't move to Utah until so okay, we decide how yeah. well, we we'll have this discussion in the list, I think. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we'll figure out how to how to I mean a bunch of our tests are single machine tests, they can move straight away, no problem. We we can run half there and half there for us. Okay. So we need to wrap up the test cases. We've already discussed the conversations today. So this goes away from here. We already had a session about VM tools. VM tools is also away from here. Documentation, uh, man info pages, we need to add them. Where are they there? Yeah, they need to be added. Okay. I'm going to put you on that one. Python doc screens exist, make sure they're up to date and continue to use them for the time. Uh, that would be just a reminder to okay. keep doing that okay. as we're ready to go. Okay, but that, that is already good. Okay. Developer oriented documentation? We started with that. We started the video. We got some of that under the wiki, yeah. Okay, but we need to improve it. Yeah. Time to be up to date. And then how to run a run list, how to write a run list, I think we will have to add that to the kit. I think so, yeah. So if I want to start the whole thing, that's the use back. That's the thing I need to check on. Yeah. Yes, it's in the wiki. And if you find problems or something doesn't work, you can either raise parts in the launch part or like, you know, fingers in the list. Or I think the list is going to be quite dynamic. We'll be trying to work. So, does anyone have anything else? I still have five minutes. Sorry for cutting you off, but I didn't think we were going to go through everything. We still have five minutes. So, yeah, I still understand how the mesh is going to be scheduled for testing. So, I have one kind of odd test case, which I got broadly automated at the moment, but not in the state I'd actually want to run automatically, which is the iSCSI root install test case that we have for server, mm -hmm. which requires a iSCSI target for the virtual machine or piece of hardware to actually, with a presented disk, to be able to install to. I don't know whether that's some, well, I wouldn't suggest you worry about that now, but it would be nice if 
that could fit somehow into the provisioner. I, I don't know whether it's provisioner or the test. It kind of feels like both. Can, yeah, I mean, I guess, so can we create that through liver? The, the iSCSI target. It's easy enough to create. Oh, it's, well, it's, yeah. Uh, we will have to have an iSCSI server running. Okay. Uh, well, Did yeah, but that can, to be honest, that can be the same server as you want to be running on. It's, it's pretty lightweight. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a multi-machine test, but like a staggered provision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is I, I don't care no. about the target. I don't care that we can install to an iSCSI target. I don't care about iSCSI. Well, I do, but I, not in the context of this test. So I, I just want the disk to be on iSCSI rather than on local file system. Sorry. Maybe okay. just need an iSCSI target. Target. I'll say that's good. <laughs> it's a multi-machine test, so you just provision two machines. This means it's out of Utah, right? It's a multi-machine test. You just provision two machines. <coughs> um, first one, uh, it, you set up iSCSI. Yeah, but my point is. Set up mass. My point is, I don't care about all that stuff. I just want to test and install to iSCSI. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. And the other one, we just reboot and see if yeah. But if, if we break Mars and yeah. iSCSI target, my test fails, and I don't care about that stuff. Well, I do, but not with this hat. You just bench Mars. The cloud is Martin, you are. I think I just need to learn more. It's very precious. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it was. We've got basically a layer above the provisioner called, what do we call it, the inventory? Yeah. That is the, that will prevent from shaking those. Right. And you never provide them directly. You instantiate an inventory class and you request a machine from them. And then they'll either give you a machine or block if I have one or explode. Yeah, but there are like different questions like how do I figure out my machine's that? Uh, no, uh, there, the there's, there is, there is one thing here that will be interesting. Uh, oh, those yeah. types of questions have to be sent to us so that we it's, can create an attitude. It's actually quite fun because I had a source code <laughs> for some of <coughs> on my laptop for my previous job. <laughs> um, so I was provisioning there in you know, 20 rates for the hardware. So right now it's probably not an issue for us because we are or at least this big scale. Eventually we might be Um, yeah, one thing that can be done then is uh, if you have a question, if you have a doubt, go there and add a question. Yeah, I think we'll we can do it in the mailing and then I'll move to, to the... the <laughs> yeah, we'll pass the ball to the next one. Yeah, we'll do it in the mailing. Yeah, I mean, but apparently it. there are like loads of server questions and raid questions okay. and mailing two questions. Yeah, and there are some pretty good answers. Yeah. As well. So, and you get brownie points or whatever. You know. <laughs> um, I had one other feature request for the bottom of the feature uh, package, and that was just to put like, a new uh, system on the field of the version. I think that's possible now, precise. So, uh, you guys can check that out. Well, the last time I looked, yeah, the QMU arm exists, but all, it doesn't have full support. Do you know that? Uh, have you heard that it? Is always sort of over now? Uh, there's, so, so just for ARM? Yeah. Uh, the last I heard about QMU ARM support was the QMU, QMU ARM support was ready, but did not support all features of the Okay. So but this was a while, so I think we're on Right. Um, so my information is probably more on the date your cousin. Yeah, can you give me an item to look at 
Okay. 